The thing that makes Heidelberg really special for me to come here is its great history in scientific advancement and its new ideas around how knowledge gets circulated around the world, how people get new knowledge and put it together in ways that come up with new products and new scientific ideas. I think that the reputation of the Institute of Geography is excellent. It's one of the institutes that's really on the frontier of putting together network analysis and geography. This 11th symposium in the series Knowledge and Space is particularly dedicated to the uh, manifold relationships between geography, which we term topographies, and networks or topologies of, uh, of society and an economy. So the idea is to meld the ideas from geography, co-presence, face-to-face -face communication on the one hand, and the complex realities of social relationships that build the networks of today's society. Clearly the most interesting thing for me is how interdisciplinary this meeting is. First of all, I've never been in a conference with geographers before, so that was totally new. But I love interdisciplinary meetings because I learn so much. And also I was very gratified to learn that my area of research, which is basically organization theory, has been adopted across a broad range of other disciplines, and that made it interesting. The likely outcome is, I think, a better understanding of how these ideas of knowledge and networks relate to space, because space, of course, is the major concern of economic geographers, and they sensitize all the other disciplines for these spatial dimensions. And this is extremely important in the field of business and economics, because our theories and our understandings usually do not relate to space, neither to geographic distance nor to institutional or social distance. Research on networks is very, very important today because it really allows us to do many things we couldn't do before. One thing that allows us to do is to analyze all sorts of big data, that is data that we can now put together in an organized fashion using a network to describe relationships among things in the database. The things could be two people and their friendship, it could be two companies and an alliance. And once you start to put things together in this new way, it allows you to predict what will happen next. So if you know two people are friends, you might know that they're going to download the same app or go to the same movie, and so on and so forth, all the way to helping us solve great issues around cancer, creation of new types of tools for farming and agriculture. I'm working on a project on Swedish municipalities and uh, looking at who they learn from. I'm very interested in how geographers think about space, although in my field in political science, no one talks about that. <laughs> the connection between social network analysis and geographical thinking, it's fairly unique in my knowledge. My main area of research is uh, social network analysis, social networks among musicians. You know, one of the challenges that I always had for my research is to uh, understand how space mixes with social networks. So one hope is to uh, have some insights to understand how space could be included. At this conference I'm going to be presenting an analysis of who gets ahead in the coaching world of the National Football League in the United States. And each team actually has up to 18 different coaches. And the question is, are they being helped because of knowledge transfer? And the answer there actually is a lot more difficult to answer, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of knowledge transfer in terms of what is helping them get ahead. It's the celebrity effect itself in the eyes of others that seems to be the key. I've been working on advice networks for a long time, and I use them as measurements for collective learning, a special kind of process that is important for collective action, I think. Society will become more sophisticated with respect to collective learning. It will have to, to adjust and to adapt to new situations. So we always had a limit of 15 speakers and the maximum 30 participants, and we always reserved a lot of time for discussions. Without a lot of time for discussions, it's not possible to bridge the gaps between the disciplines. It is a coffee break, it is a walk in the garden, it is a the walk in the old part of the city where we try to answer the difficult questions. Fantastic. Very nice, because in very big meetings, you usually only have 15 minutes and then five minutes of discussion, and it's really not enough. And so this whole conference is organized very, very nicely. People get a chance to really talk about their research, and there's ample time for discussion and feedback. 
it's been really a nice discovery and nice discovery also this place and the Chira Foundation looks like a you know fantastic place precisely for this type of uh, purposes exchange ideas knowledge uh, in a quite free and relaxed way which is uh, normally the way in which you should do it Thank you.